glory. How's everybody? Well, some of you look different. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Don't you just love God's presence? That's why people go out and use drugs, because they're looking for God's presence, but they're deceived. Everybody's looking for God's presence. They just don't know it. That's everybody's problem, the lack of God's presence. Amen? You know, it's pretty powerful because as we were worshiping, I saw people begin to get sucked into God's atmosphere. In other words, they were pressing, going through because of their worship. All of a sudden, they aren't... Whoo, whoo. And people that were worshiping the Lord truly, with all their hearts, were being sucked into God's presence. He says, I'm bringing them into my atmosphere. So, so many people are expecting God's atmosphere to show up. And he says, I'm bringing you into my atmosphere. That's where he searches those who will worship him in truth and spirit. Amen? That's why we go after his presence. That's why we lift our hands and surrender. Man, if you can't lift your hands and surrender, you're full of pride. Besides demons. Amen? You need some deliverance and healing big time. But God is faithful to complete what he started. He's faithful to complete what he started. He's called the great overseer. Everyone say great overseer. Go on, lift your hands to heaven and get another drink. Thank you, Master. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Just tell him thank you. The more you thank him, the more you get filled. <laughs> That's called thanking him to death. Your death. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. <sighs> Turn your neighbor. Tell him, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 19. Thank you, Master. <laughs> glory, glory, and glorious. Hallelujah. <sighs> Ooh. Psalm 19. Of course, for today's teaching is called Great Overseer. If you allow him to. <laughs> he cannot oversee you unless you're willing to cooperate. Glory. In verse 1, let's speak it out. Is everybody there? Psalm 19.1, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. Day and today utter speech, and night and tonight reveals knowledge. And there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven and its circuit to the other end. And there is nothing hidden from his heat or his presence. But see, everything revolves around the tabernacle of God. Everything. That is the port way home. It is the tunnel all the way home. Everything revolves around the tabernacle. That's why when the Israelites were called forth and left Egypt. What did they build? The tabernacle of God. And they surrounded the tabernacle. Why? Because that's where the presence of God is. That's where the glory of God is. That's where he is the overseer. So let me share something important to you. And this is one of the things that as I was in prayer, the Lord said to me, he says, not everyone is still awakened yet. There are people who are believers, say to their believers, but they're still asleep. For years. 10, 20, 30 years are still asleep. They haven't fully awakened. He said, as if he was living in the outer court, you ain't awake yet. That's called a place of conception. That's where you are conceived. But in the holy place, that's why so many miss, that's why the enemy doesn't want people to be baptized in the Holy Ghost or maintain that position because that's a place of awakening. You know, the 12-step programs, their final step is awakening. 
Unfortunately, they awaken everything else but the truth. People are still going to 12-step. We skipped them all. We jumped right into the glory. <laughs> but in this, so this is where the enemy likes to get people out of the second chamber and the third chamber and keep them in the first chamber, which is a place of conception. That's where salvation is. Amen. But there's beyond salvation. And people are not fully awake yet. So they're drowsy. That's why they don't see. Look, there's a difference if someone's awake and who's not. Or even someone who's partially awake. You know, you can talk to them. You'll find out where they're at. Amen. You'll see if they're awakened or not. We want to reach a place of full awakening. Fully awakened. Why? So you see, know, you know all. You're in relationship with the Lord. He's before you in all things. You're willing to accept counsel, correction, and direction. And you're willing to do whatever it takes because it's not you anymore. Amen? It's Him. Hallelujah. Nothing is hidden from His presence. Nothing. He is the great overseer of all things. Some, so many people don't believe. They say to believe, but they don't follow. They refuse to follow. It shows that they don't believe. In 1 Peter chapter 2. First Pete chapter 2. The great overseer. You know, what a time we are in right now. It's phenomenal. There's such a battle in the spirit realm. And many people are being taken out or put to sleep. Because they're still self-centered. Their focus is more on them. Let me tell you, when you go to praise and worship the Lord, do not look for a feeling. You're focused on you then. Amen? If God chooses to bring his touch to you, then praise God. But stop looking for the feeling. You're there to worship and honor him and fulfill your duty as a priest. Amen? Does everybody understand that? When, you're, when your self-centeredness comes before your duty, you're out of order. And you will be removed from the second chamber to the first. And you'll become drowsy, sleepy. You'll be more self-centered to yourself. Don't look for anything but Him. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 18. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. For this is commendable. If because of conscience toward God, one endures grief, sufferings wrongfully, for what credit is it when you are beaten for your faults? <laughs> you take it patiently. But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us as an example that you should follow his steps. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls, who oversees our souls. That we are in a process of conversion and regeneration into his image and likeness. That continues. It never stops. Never. In Ephesians chapter 4. But it takes cooperation. Without cooperation, you will never get there. You know, the formula Jesus gave us was deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow, right? I mean, that's, 
That's the formula of victory. That's the formula of getting through the tabernacle, of getting, to, getting home. Ephesians 4.11, let's speak it. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Why? So the kingdom of God can expand. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a what? Perfect man. How many God, how many all know God's trying to bring you to a place of perfection? That you you can't be perfected in yourself. It's in him you're perfected. To the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, so that the fullness of God's character is manifested through you. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies as by cooperation. According to the effect of working by which every part does its share. Causes growth of the body for the edifying itself in love. To the perfect man. To the, so we must allow the Spirit of the Lord to get in every area of our members and allow Him to have full control. Because when He gets perfect control, we become pliable. We become pliable in the Master's hand. And that's when He begins to use us for service. In Jeremiah 18, The great overseer, that's my dad, perfecting all things for his glory. What does it take? Cooperation. Verse, eight, uh, verse 1, chapter 18, the word of the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my what? Welcome to the potter house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. The wheel is known as the anointing. And the vessel that was made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into a, another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. How many of y'all know God put you on the potting wheel? Not the potty wheel, the potting wheel. Hello? Although some people are still on the potty wheel, I don't know. <laughs> still need to be potty trained. But in the, on, on the, in the anointing, what God will do, he, he begins to mold you. And as soon as you begin to not cooperate, he crushes you. So he can start over again. Why? Because that's a flaw. He's the God of perfection, not flaws. Amen? When he begins to see something that's not right, he'll stop everything. He won't let you go any further. He stops it. And he puts you back on the wheel. But so many people cry, Oh Lord, I want to know you. But when he starts working with them, they run. Boom. Wimps. No fighters. Runners. Why? Too much self. And that's what God's kind of trying to crush out, self. Amen? Everything of old that's abominable to him, he's trying to crush out so he can form us into more and more of his image and likeness. Hallelujah. And verse 4. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred into the hand of the potter, so he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, how can I not do with you as this potter? says the Lord. Look at the clay. Is it in the potter's hand? So are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The instant I speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it. If that nation, if that individual against whom I have spoken turns from his or her evil ways, I will relent from the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. 
And the instant I speak concerned in a nation and concerned in the kingdom to build and to plant it, if, it, if that individual or nation does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice or cooperate with me, then I will relent from concern in the good with which I said I would benefit it. Does everybody understand? In other words, God will hold everything back and let you run the course. He'll just say, go ahead, run it. Eventually you'll quit. Eventually he'll have enough walls and have enough bumps on your head. You'll look like a creature. And give up. And surrender. For many of us had to. Amen? I had more, but I needed to have a helmet when I was out there. Thank God he replaced that helmet with a salvation helmet. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what's he trying to do? We're trying to become vessels of honor by the great overseer. Hallelujah. In Psalm 139. Psalm 139. What gets us in position? What two things that we talked about before? To what? Seek and to sow. Put you in position. Seek and sow. Seek and sow. Seek and sow. You seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You seek him. And as you're doing, you're speaking, 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 singing, singing, singing. You're sowing, sowing, sowing. What happens? You begin to fall into position. That's why people who can't worship, they fall, they're out of position all the time. Why? Because they can never progress and advance. What brings you to the next place is God's, the more God's presence, the more you change. Psalm 139, verse 1. No, yes. Okay. We'll take that one. Verse 1, let's speak it. Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. And are acquainted with all of my ways. Why? Because he's the overseer. He knows everything. And there is not a word on my tongue. But behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before. In other words, protected me. And laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you. But the night shines as the day, and darkness and the light are both alike to you. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book they were written, the days fashioned for me, and when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in the number than the sand. When I awake... I am still with you. So is awakening essential? Yes. Isn't that what's happening over the whole world right now? That's called the great awakening. The problem, not everybody's being awakened or partially awakened. You know, even when 9-11 came, many people got awakened for a moment. Then they went right back. And now many of them that were awakened for a moment went back are worse than they've ever been. They're back asleep and serving darkness. See, when you fall asleep, you serve darkness. Amen. He knows it all. <laughs> He's bringing us to a position and a place of perfection, fully awakened to his call, purpose, destiny, with all truth. 
He's putting us to a place and position of perfection, fully awakened, fully awakened, fully awakened to his call, his purpose, and his destiny with all truth. Glory. Ephesians 5. Why? Because he's the great overseer. Is everybody there? Verse 1. Ephesians 5, 1. Therefore be what? Imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us. Get himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Let me explain something about that sweet smelling aroma. That sweet smelling aroma is released when you overcome and worship. When you overcome yourself. Does everybody understand it? When you overcome yourself and the powers and attack of the enemy, when you overcome and pass over, poof, a sweet smelling aroma goes before God. Other than that, you stink. Hello? We want a sweet smelling aroma, not man made deodorant. When you cross over, when you overcome, why? It's like friction. You overcome. And something sparks and that sweet smelling aroma goes before God. He goes, there's my victory in him, in her. It's awesome. Anyway, I thought you might want to know that. Hallelujah. All right, where are we at? Oh, yeah. Okay. Verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolishness, foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, what is an unclean person? Anyone that's touching unclean things. Like drugs, alcohol, all kinds of other pornography and foolishness. Unclean person or covetousness, covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Remember, who you serve when you die is where you go. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. See, if you can't expose yourself, you won't expose the other stuff. Amen? Our responsibility is to expose everything in us. Don't try to expose anybody else. Amen? When you got the National Grand Forest in your eye, and the other person's got a tree in theirs. Amen? Verse 12. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake. Awake. I'm telling you, it's a cry of God to awaken people to the fullness. Awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Perfection of imitation as offsprings of Christ. <laughs> it can only start with a full awakening. Does everybody understand that? We must be awakened. Why? Because truly awakening causes an individual to cooperate with everything. Not partial awakening. People still compromise them. So you got the outer court, which is conception. You got the holy place, which is awakened. And you got the most holy place, which is service. Jeremiah 17. Conception, awaken, and service. Glory. Jeremiah 17. In verse 5. 
Can a person that's fully awakened trust God? Yes. So a person that's partially awakened or has gone from awakenedness to partial sleep will not. They'll be teeter-totters. They'll compromise. They're like uh, roller coasters up and down. They'll still be led by how they feel. People are led by how they feel are dangerous. They're dangerous. Because they allow their feelings to dictate and make decisions. That means they don't have control over themselves. But you must be fully awakened. When you are fully awakened, there is dominion over everything. Verse 5, let's speak it. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. And he shall be like a shrub in the desert. He shall not see when good comes. Wow, why he's going to miss God's opportunities all the time. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, a dry land. In a salt land which is not inhabited. In other words, that person will have no presence. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, constantly being fed. Which spreads out its roots by the river. And will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green. And will not be anxious in the year of drought. Oh, many people. That's where people, when they're relying on self-centeredness, anxiousness is a part of the fruit of it. They're anxious for everything. They can't trust, will rest their weight. Nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is what? Deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the thoughts of man. Even to give every man according to his ways. According to the fruit of his doings. I know everybody here wants to be blessed. But you must sow your way out of cursed. 1 Samuel 16. First Samuel 16. Hallelujah. In verse 1. Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul who was king? See, and I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse the Bithamite. For I provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I am coming to sacrifice to the Lord. Boy, the Lord's got sneaky good ways, you know. He knows it all. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I named to you. So Samuel, the prophet of the Lord, did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town troubled at his coming and said, Do you come peacefully? Why? Because they feared him. And he said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and he invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Eli and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For the Lord looks at the for the man looks at outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Why? The heart is the core of all desire. Whatever your desires are is what your fruits are. He knows exactly what your desires are. They are before us all the time. So Jesse called Abadiah and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shimon pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. 
And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen them. And Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest. Number eight. Meaning new beginning. Hallelujah. <laughs> there remains yet a younger one. And there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send him and bring him. For he'll not sit until, we will not sit until he comes here. So he sat and brought him in. Now he was a uh, Rudy with bright eyes, good looking. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Now look at, I want to show you something next. But the spirit of the Lord departed when the, so the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, the king, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. Let me tell you, without God's presence, once you walk away from God's presence, demons come instantly. Instantly and take you over. And you don't even know it. Next thing you have desires of the world. Desires to use drugs. Desires to do this. Desires all fulfilling of the flesh. That's it. Why? No presence. Gone. Does everybody understand? So we see that the eighth son of meaning new beginning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Remember. God said I searched the heart. He knows the desires of a man. See David was a man after God's heart. Even though he made mistakes, he was still a man after God's heart. He stood, he, when David used to run, he used to get in front of the ark. When he saw many people die touching the ark, he still ran to the ark. He worshipped the Lord, even in his underwear, he didn't care. He went in God's presence because God's presence was everything to him. And it should be everything to me and you. That's why people blow it. No presence. Lack of presence. Lack of that desire. No connection. And that's the enemy's ploy, isn't it? Didn't he just, get, didn't he just finish all of that? He, pre he prevented people from assembling? You know, they want to drive through video on you know, internet worship, stuff like that. Forget all that crap. That's not how God wanted it. He wants us in his presence by what? Worship, worship, worship. Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36, 22. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Praise God. Let's speak it. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, I will... will I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. Thank you. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am what? When I am howled in you before their eyes. In other words, when I am expressed in you. When I am awakened in you. See, before that, we were all abominations. Amen? Profaning the name of God. Why? Just, it, didn't, it didn't mean you had to speak it. It means we lived a life of darkness. Many people out there are backslidden, call themselves Christians. That's profaning the Lord. Amen? But thank God for his mercies and grace that are new every morning. He gives us, he, his opportunities never stop. Never. They never stop. Hallelujah. He said this. He says, verse 24, For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness, and from all your what? Idols, because idols are filthiness. How many of all you know, you can be your own idol. And I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Then I will put my spirit within you and cause you, cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. In other words, he's going, to, he's not going to force it on you, but he's going to convict you. Amen. He'll convict to cause us to get back in place. 
Then you shall dwell in the land and that I give to your fathers. And you shall be my people and I will be your God. I will deliver you from all of your uncleanness. And I will call for the grain to multiply it and bring no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase your fields so that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. How many of y'all want to prosper? Every one of us should want to. But you first must prosper in the Lord. Amen. We get a new heart, a new spirit. It all takes cooperations to maintain it. Without cooperation, you cannot maintain it. Psalm 138. Why? Because he is the great overseer. Psalm 138. In verse 1, let's speak it together. 1 through 8. I'll praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing praises to you. I'll worship towards your holy temple and praise your name and your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above your name. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. When they hear the words of your mouth, yes, they will sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lonely. But the proud he knows from afar. So if you have a long distance relationship with God, it's because you're carrying too much pride. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies. And your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect what concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. He will perfect what concerns you. Why? Because he's the great overseer. Second Peter 1. And then one more scripture. Hallelujah. In verse 2. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. We all there yet? Let's speak of grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises, that through these great and precious promises you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, Giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. But so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Escaping the corrupt. God always makes a way of escape, man. Escaping the corruption as partakers of the divine nature provided by the great overseer. Man, he's provided everything for me and you. And I want to close at Psalm 103. We just got to partake, and partake takes cooperation. Psalm 103.
and verse 1. Hallelujah. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who what? Forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses. His acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us. Nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, thank God, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward us, though to those who what? Fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he's removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him, for he knows our frame. He remembers that we are what? Dust. As a man, as for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place remembers no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. On those who fear or reverence him. And means cooperate with him. <laughs> Amen. For his righteousness to children's children's. To such as keep his covenant, and to those who remember his commandment, to do them. That is a promise for me and you. He is the great overseer. Amen. Let him prefer, perfect what needs to be perfected in you. Let him put you on the wheel. Don't jump off. Amen. Don't let offense, don't let laziness, self-centeredness, keep your eyes off of yourself. And keep them on him. Don't be concerned what people think. Be concerned what he thinks. <laughs> Most important thing. <clears throat> and stay in divine order and holy order. Those two things are essential. And how do we get in position? To seek and to sow. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal your words that have been imparted in us with the blood of Christ and the seal of the Holy Spirit so that it may grow and bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name.